Welcome to my channel. I've got um, one of the final tasks I need to do to complete the front end of the Series 2A 88. And um, I've already done the other side. I'll just give you a bit of a sticky beak on that. There it is, all complete. So now I'm going to be doing the same for this side. And I'll try to cover what I've done. Um, it's, it's fairly simple to do. I don't think it's complicated at all. But we'll go through the process. So I've got the stub axle here ready to go with the new distance piece there. I've got the bearings already pre-greased. I've got the backing plate over here with the wheel cylinders in the correct position. I hope. And I've got the hub up here which I'll obviously need to put the bearings and the uh, seal on there. So what I try to do is I'll try to make it so that I cover each piece as I'm going along. This is the way I do it um, and as I mentioned in the description below I'm not a mechanic. Um, I do these um, according to my years of experience in tinkering as a do-it-yourself backyarder. So um, things may be a little different um, uh, if, if you've done this before and you've done it, um, you know, your way, that's fine as well. But I've already packed this up before, but I'm just um, doing this one more time. So that's nice and snug in there, so I'll just take that out for the minute. Now, turn around and I'll get rid of this. And I'll do the same. There's already grease in here, but... Beautiful. Right, so now that I've got that there, I'm going to put the seal on. Now, I had an issue with these. And you can see here on the side how it's a little bit scuffed. That was because what I needed to do there was to take off some of this rubber or plastic, whatever we call it, and um, trim it down because the diameter was actually too large for the opening. So it was about 5.5 of a mil too large. And so I was sitting above and I couldn't actually press it down. I actually ruined one of these attempting to press it down as it was. So I think there was a bad batch. So I had to take a wire wheel and just trim off the edge until I got it all nice and even. It took about, like I said, about half a mil out. That's how bad it was. So I'm just going to um, give it a bit more grease in here. Yes, you might be thinking it's a bit overkill, but um, okay, so there she's in. And now I'm just going to press that in. Try to press it in straight. That did not, was not able to go in on its own without me trimming it. So just bear that in mind if you're getting a part, you may need to measure that. Okay, and that's done. As I said, we've got the top bearing. That'll go in there. 
I'll actually probably give this a more, bit more grease on this bearing, I think. Right, so with the, uh, the hub completed and ready to go, bearings are in there, all looking good. Just put that over here. Next step is to put the stub axle onto the um, swivel housing, <clears throat> but that has a that has a, a gasket. And what I usually do here is I put RTV on this side to basically stick the gasket on, and then on this other side where it mates up with the swivel housing, I put grease. So I'll go ahead and do that now. For me is that this surface here is going to be a lot easier to remove a gasket that's been stuck with RTV than, um, than the actual swivel housing. Now some people say you don't need this, you just put grease on, um, on both ends and that might be the case. That might be something that you decide that that's what you prefer to do but I'm just doing it this way for the moment. My preference Okay, so that's that, and now we'll carefully align that up. So the shaft's in there nice and secured. I bought this grease and um, it's a high temp grease but I must say that I'm not happy with it at all it's very very stringy but I'm going to use it anyway for stuff like this okay a bit of grease in there as well so that'll sit nicely there All I'm doing here is just putting it into, into position so I don't have to balance it all. And I'll take, take them out again. Okay. Right. So yeah, it's a bit of a hassle trying to do it all on your own. That's the way it is. So these, these, these um, lock tabs are actually two... Um, they're too big, so what I do is I'm going to have to just bend them like that, and then bend them on the edges. As I was saying, these tabs like are actually so quite, they're too long, so I've just bent them beforehand to make it um, easier to fit. So now all I do is I just put them on here, and I'll do all those, um, there's six of them all up, and then that should be ready to then bend these tabs over. Right, so they're being in position now and all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to torque them up so that um, they're in the right um, or roughly about the right um, torque settings on each. has all bent back now. Um, look, it, it would be a lot easier if you did it without the cylinders in place, um, just to kind of get to these ones that are in the way of the cylinder. It's doable, but um, yeah, a lot easier if you didn't have those in, in the way. So um, anyway, it's done. Right, so what I'll do now is attempt to put the brakes on, uh, the actual shoes. And um, because what I want to do is I want to get to these spring mounts here before I start assembling the, um, the hub assembly. So I'll get the components for those. Oh, 
I also put that on the top just so that it's um, easy to locate. And I'll finish that off on the top there. sitting nicely in this slot okay so that's all nicely done now put into place <clears throat> 